back to the Squarespace Entrepreneur Podcast. Today, I'm here with Rasmus Myberg of the Spark Plugin, and we're going to get into his story. I, um, I first met Rasmus a couple of years ago. I think he reached out to me, um, I think, when you were launching Spark uh, initially, um, and we've been in touch uh, since then. Um, as he's grown and uh, he's done, you know, he's doing a lot more. Um, and so I wanted to kind of just get to know you a bit and, and get into your story about, first of all, um, you know, what what got you up to wanting to uh, create the Spark plugin? And then, um, you know, if you'd give us some of the rationale behind the Spark plugin. Um, but yeah, go ahead and introduce yourself and, um, you know, excited to get to know um you know what brought you here yeah <clears throat> thanks so Mary. so yeah i'm uh, i'm a swedish guy uh, 26 um living in gothenburg and um uh, my journey with my current business which which is spark plugin started uh it's not several years but a year ago i, w- I would say when I was uh, sitting with one of my clients' websites, and it was uh, a pretty huge website, so I had to uh, code a lot of custom code to it, and you know, uh, search online for different uh, solutions uh, and copy pasting codes and such. Uh, yeah. And after making that code, uh, I had to check in different browsers in mobile, and then it broke. It uh, affected uh, each other, the codes. Um, And uh, yeah, I ended up, uh, it ended up taking a lot of time for me. So I thought um, there has to be a better way to do this, right? Mm -hmm. Um, So I started experimenting. Um, with some different techniques and I ended up uh, making Spark plugin uh, which in my opinion is a much much uh, easier solution uh, than uh, coding uh, because with Spark you can you just need one um, one plugin one design plugin and then you have like uh, more than a hundred different customizations right um, on your fingertips that you can, uh, you know, select different uh, effects, different buttons, different background and such. Um, So yeah, I launched uh, six months ago and uh, yeah, more and more uh, has started using Spark since then. Wait, it's only been six months? I, I yeah, feel like, only six months. Somewhere. Oh my God, I <laughs> feel like I it's I been reached, a year. <laughs> yeah, least, yeah, I think uh, I reached out to you uh, for maybe one year ago. I reached right. out to you way before the launch. <laughs> Got it. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense now. Um, well, uh, if you're not familiar with the Spark plugin, um, I've played with it and it definitely, definitely lives up to its name of um, allowing you to add that extra spark to your Squarespace site. Um, and so it's a browser extent, it's an extension, a Squarespace extension. Um, and, uh, within a couple of clicks, you have access to what before, uh, like Rasmus just broke down would have taken you hundreds of snippets, snippets that you have to individually customize. Um, now you can just, uh, use something like spark to, Uh, do it with a couple of clicks. Now, um, you know, we got to speak real quick. And, um, you know, I know this isn't your first entrepreneurial venture. Um, So, you know, what, what, what got you into the world of web design, um, to even get to the point of conceptualizing a plugin like this? Yeah, um, so I would say my my journey started uh, back in high school when I started my first uh, business, which was uh, making websites for for uh, clients. Um, and I was, yeah, very young, very young b- back then and uh, haven't had almost any uh, experience from 
working on different places or didn't have any uh, business um, uh, business mindset and such. So mm -hmm. no contacts, no. Um, uh, but well, I, I started uh, my first business and uh, started a website, uh, which had very cheap uh, websites. So I thought, uh, well, this will sell uh, super good. But uh, yeah, the days went on and the uh, weeks went on and the months yeah. went on. I didn't get a single um, email from anyone and probably not a single uh, visitor on my site either. Mm -hmm. So. Um, yeah, I thought I had to do something about it. So I uh, looked at all the different uh, websites in my town for the small businesses. Uh, and I made a list. It was like 100 uh, businesses. Mm -hmm. And I visited those sites and uh, thought that, yeah, 20 of those um, really need a, a new look. Um, so I um, yeah, walked to all the different businesses and um, yeah, said, I, I can make this for you and uh, it will be much better. It just costs this much. Uh, yeah, but same thing here. The days went on, the weeks went on and I didn't get any, any contact from them either. Uh, so it was pretty, you know, it, it was like a really big failure for me back yeah. then, uh, you know, high school and such. But then uh, I got my first co customer. They called uh, several weeks after. Uh, so yeah, that's where it started. I um, I only have had one customer that first year, but it started growing and I got yeah. more and more customers. And uh, then it... Um, uh, I started uh, spark plugging like um, seven years after that. Right. I love that story, man, because I remember in yeah. high school um, wanting to maybe start a web design business um, and then later on in college having the same idea. And then, um, you know, like you get to that first point of like something not working and it's like you either just abandon it or you go figure out something else. And um, I think that direct sales aspect of, all right, I've got a list of possible customers um, and then I've got a list of likely customers and I'm going to make sure that, um, you know, even though I'm selling something that is virtual, I can make a physical contact to do it. Um, I think it's easy to forget that, um, especially in the beginning, early stages of your business is that it's by any means necessary um, until those means start to produce themselves. Um, so I'm sure that after that first client, it was what, referrals or, you know, did you still have to keep, um, you know, showing up to businesses and saying, hey, I could do your website. Like, how did it work from that point? Yeah, so uh, back in, in high school, I didn't have uh, any business contacts whatsoever. So it was really hard. Uh, but just that I got like the first customer and starting, um, uh, yeah, I met new people in the business field yeah. and uh, that uh, was a huge boost for me. You know, uh, year one, I had one customer, then three and then, you know, exponentially uh, right. it grew. So it's much easier when you have a small uh, base you can start from if you mm -hmm. don't yeah it's it's hard to start a business if you don't have anything before that so when you when you went to college was it to study business or uh you know what was it that that you decided was going to be the focus to help you continue to build your business uh yeah so i didn't uh, actually want to go to college if, because i always thought that uh, I wanted to have my own business, yeah. but, but back then I only made uh, like in dollars, uh, yeah, like $200 per month. So I couldn't survive on that. So uh, I, uh, I went on a design, uh, yeah, design college, what do you say? Mm. Yeah. yeah. And uh, 
actually dropped out uh, the last year to uh, to focus on one hundred percent on my uh, business. Oh wow, that's uh, like that's dope, man. <laughs> yeah, it was very stressful in that last year because I had like one hundred percent college and one hundred percent business, and it didn't work. So right. I uh, jumped on the business train. Yeah, no, that's uh, that's really inspiring to hear. Um, because in an alternate reality, I think I would have done the same thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it's cool to talk to you. Um, so w- with Spark, you know, so now we're up to Spark, right? At what point, um, at what point did Squarespace become a platform of choice for you? Were you um, always using Squarespace or were you building websites from scratch using a different platform? Like where, how did that fit into your, uh, your journey? Yeah, so uh, when I started making websites, it was uh, just from scratch, you know, uh, JavaScript, HTML, and such. Um, yep. uh, and I tried uh, a couple of different platforms, but ended u- up using uh, Squarespace. Uh, it was like three or four years ago, mm-hmm. and I have always uh, continued using Squarespace. After that, I really love the ease of use. You know, you can set up a, a pretty good looking website in just like one minute. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, but I think it's it, in its current state, it, it is really easy to use, but sometimes a bit um, uh, too, too small options. You don't have that many options so that uh, that's why I think Spark and other type of plugins is great to have. So do you ever um, do you ever worry that perhaps Squarespace can say, oh, this is a great idea here. You, you know, why not um, just make this native to the product um, and, and absorbing it? Do, is that something that you think about? How do you like either strategize through that, hedge against it? Like what's your thought process? Uh, yeah, great question. Um, yeah, uh, once uh, it was uh, in the beginning, uh, yeah, just when I have launched, it yeah. got really stressful because I, um, uh, yeah, Squarespace made a post on the forums about we have a super cool thing. This will change everything uh, right. about designing in Squarespace. And I got super stressful. I just, ha- have I like made this plugin in like six months? Yeah. And then I will just make something uh, <laughs> like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I di- uh, ended up going on that meeting that I have. Mm-hmm. And I was so relieved just uh, one minute <laughs> in the meeting. <laughs> it was so much smaller than I ever thought. <laughs> so uh, what <laughs> it was like um, the background arts. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> so yeah, kept, yeah. <laughs> it was not at all like a Spark plugin. So, mm-hmm. um, so what I've learned since de- since then is that um, Squarespace keep adding features, which is great that they do. Um, but I keep adding features too mm. in a much uh, you know faster pace. Right. Uh, so they can't, they just take some of, I, yeah. Yeah, I get it. You know. um, and and, and I, I've been asking this question for years. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. and, and, and I've, you know, I've dealt with it myself as well. So I definitely know, um, know what that's like. And so because the changes are iterative and they're usually small, um, like for example, we have plugins that um, some of the functions are now native to, to Squarespace, but then there's still things that you can't do unless you still go and get the plugin. Um, so, you know, in the same sense, if you're, if you're, if you're out there and you're building something in parallel or uh, tangential to the Squarespace product, um, you know, doing so with your own intention and purposefulness of like, I'm going to make this as good for um, whoever decides to use it as possible so that even if um, some aspect of it is absorbed by the platform, um, there's still enough added value that, uh, you know, your customers will stick around. Um, and 
I'm, I feel privileged to be able to, to share that advice alongside you because um, uh, I've, I, I remember asking the question four years ago when um, the first guest we had was MemberSpace, uh, Ward from MemberSpace, which is a, a membership plugin. Um, and at the time, there was no possibility to do member areas natively with, with Squarespace. Um, but the point is that to this day, you know, there's still things that it's worth getting member space um, in order to do where you can't do it natively. So, um, Rasmus, uh, thanks again for joining us today. Um, it's a pleasure talking to you, uh, you know, live like this. And um, yeah, thank you. You too. Uh, if there's any last words that you want to share with our guests, I mean, our listeners, viewers now. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think you uh, just get out of your comfort zone and um, uh, be brave to fail because failing is like part of having a business. Mm. <laughs> Great advice. Um, yeah. <laughs> Simple <laughs> I'll, I'll, and nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to go get ready to, to keep failing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks again, Rasmus. And uh, for all the listeners out there, check out Spark Plugin. Um, what's the domain? Is it sparkplugin.com? Yes. Sparkplugin.com. There'll be a link below this video or wherever you're listening to this podcast. Um, so you could check it out for yourself. Yeah, thank you very much.